the honor and privilege to be your speaker for this Global Mission Sunday morning. I do not take it lightly that God has placed me where he has, and I pray that my presence and my words will speak to someone in a special way. To the shepherd of this church, Dr. Adrian Nelson, and his awesome wife, Dr. Tina Nelson, I am truly blessed to call you my friend. To the trustees, stewards, missionaries, and all my friends of this great church, I greet you and thank you for your prayers and support in all that God has placed on my heart to pursue. I will not be before you long, but would like to challenge you with the thought of the blessing is in the giving. Amen. Let us pray. Settle down, Lord. For I am your servant, standing in a holy place. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Yes, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Every believer is to live a life of mission. I'm not saying that every believer is to move around the world and to do the same mission ministry. But I am saying that we should intentionally be mission-minded in all we do. In our role as missionaries, we combine both giving and educating by following the instruction of God. Deuteronomy 16, 17 states, every man should give as he is able according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. God has given each of us gifts that we need and we, as Christ followers, are not exempt from using these gifts. We may not do, what we may not do, is use these gifts or blessings as we have been instructed to. God gives us instructions of how we should give, how we should treat others, how we should honor our mothers and fathers, how we should care for the body which serves as his temple, and how we should worship him. He gives us the day-to-day -day instructions of the how. In Psalms 32, 8, he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. God's instruction for the missionary is to give your best to him and go and make disciples of all nations. He has instructed us to have personal relationships with him so that we can give he has instructed us to give love when there is none being shown, as he has loved us. Oh, yeah. He has instructed us to evangelize when there is no one evangelizing. Mm -hmm. He has instructed us to give when no one else is giving. Yes. God's instructions are clear. He knew we would need them. Even when he gives them to us, we do not always follow them. Yeah. In your daily experiences, God gives us instructions to practice a life of mission. He places us in office complexes, in college campuses, grocery stores, hair salons, nail salons, barber shops, on the streets of our city, and in our own homes where we can touch and share. He wants us to have an all hands on deck mentality in giving, and giving our best in sharing his word. This is his instruction to us. The ultimate instruction in our lives of mission is to bring glory to God by giving to others. God has given each of us the gifts we need, and as Christ's followers, we are not exempt from using these gifts. These gifts can be used in all ministries, and especially in the mission ministry, as God requires that believers leverage their lives for his glory. A life in missions is about intersecting the gospel intentionally into our everyday routines, given with our, our present everyday rhythms. This is the instruction we must embrace. We must step out on his journey as God has directed us to share his word. Giving begins with experiences and expressions that grow in the extensions that have us intentionally doing God's work and giving to others. The instruction to go and give of your best places you in an environment that you can reach out to those around you and share his word. We must maximize and utilize generosity 
of all the blessings God has given to us in the ways of spiritual gifts, finances, abilities, and time to further God's kingdom. Each one of us are instructed to use the blessings we have received, we have received to serve and give to others. Giving is not always about going to a specific place. It's about being intentional where you are in sharing God's love and word. It's a lifestyle. God has placed you in the environment you are in because he wants you to reach out to the people around you and share his word. This is giving. Christian freedom is not a license to live for self. On the contrary, it's an opportunity to go beyond the requirements of the law by becoming conformed to the image of Christ. Paul, in his writings, strongly urges Christians to give of their resources to other believers and to the work of the Lord. It's a joyous determination to follow the example of Christ when we discover that, we, that the Lord gives back to us. When he does this, it is exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or ask. In the words of Jesus, give and will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, and running over will be put in your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured to give back to you. Being intentionally mission-minded and giving in a way of life that goes with you where you go. When God calls you, you go. He wants you to be ready for the task at hand. So you must always be prepared. A weak, a weak, a weak gospel foundation leads to very fragile mission practices. And that is not a characteristic of God-giving Christians that we should be. Asking persons how you can pray for them may help them build relationships with you and the relationship with God also. Learn of the needs of those around you and move towards fulfilling that need. That is giving the best that you have. Make sacrifice, sacrificial investments in those around you and those that you meet, showing them that they are worth it. That is giving. Investing our lives isn't easy, and often we wonder why we don't see a return on our investment with our giving. Are you really giving from your heart in the way God would want you to? We must maximize and utilize generously all of the resources God has given to us in the way of spiritual gifts. Each one should use whatever gift he or she has received to serve and give to others. If we are intentional in our mission-minded giving, in all that we do, then we can maximize our purpose, we can win the world for Christ, and we can, each one, make one. Give it time, pray a lot, and allow God to work in his timing but always be intentionally mission-minded in your giving. The truth is, the natural man or woman doesn't like to give of his stuff, no matter whether it's time, services, or finance. In our basis form, we want to hoard and grab. It isn't easy to let go and give, although when we get our giving right, a lot of things in our lives will just fall into place. Jesus said, if you want to be first, you must then become last. If you want to sit at the head of the table, start at the foot of the table. If you want to lead others first, become servant. Giving helps us stay involved in the lives of others. In today's high-octane world, we tend to stay busy and focus on ourselves too much. Our comfortable cars have great radios that insulate us from people who are hurting. Our homes have become personal fortresses that all too often are used to close the world out. Paul's warning us, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in ruin and destruction. Giving is a good way to become involved in the lives of other people who have needs that we can address. The Bible teaches us the principle of sowing and reaping. Simple put, if you want to reap blessing, we sow it. Choose to be a blessing to others and see how God blesses you so that you can continue to be a blessing. A story tells of a man that was a jogger who liked to jog on Sunday morning. 
Each time he would jog by the lake, he would see the same elderly woman sitting at the water's edge with a small metal cage sitting beside her. On the, one day, the curiosity got the best of him, and he stopped jogging and walked over to the lake. He got closer and he realized the metal cage was a small trap. There were three turtles, unharmed, slowly walking around the base of the trap. She had a fourth turtle in her lap that she was carefully scrubbing with a spongy brush. He said to her, I see you here every Sunday morning. If you don't mind my nosiness, I'd love to know what you are doing with these turtles. She smiled, I'm cleaning their shells. Anything on a turtle shell like algae or scum reduces the turtle's ability to swim. It can also corrode and weaken the shell over time. Wow, that's really nice, he said. She went on that she wanted to say that she spends a couple of hours each Sunday morning relaxing by the lake and helping these little guys out. It's my own strange way of giving and making a difference. The man replied, but don't most freshwater turtles live their whole lives with algae and scum hanging over their shells? Yes sadly replied. The man, still curious, asked, don't you think your time could be better spent? I don't think the efforts are all that kind, but there are fresh water turtles living all around the world. And 99% of these turtles don't have kind people like you to help them clean their shell. So no offense, but exactly how are your local lives efforts truly making a difference? The woman giggled. She looked down at the turtle in her lap and scrubbed the last piece of algae off the shell. And she said, sweetie, if this little guy could talk, he'd tell you I make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You too can change the world in your focus of giving, maybe not all at once, but one person and one good deed at a time. God blesses you to give. No matter how big or how small you think the task is, you will make a difference. When you give, God blesses you abundantly in all aspects of your life. Give the love he has given you. Give the finances that he has blessed you with. Give the knowledge that he has helped you to acquire. Give the prayers for others to be blessed. So I ask you, are you following the instructions and making giving a blessing to others? There is a blessing in his instruction to give. And I suggest, as God tells us, to take the time to follow his instruction. You won't regret it. You will not regret it. Just follow his plan of giving and receive your blessing. And the blessing is 